Are you someone from the U.S. who's going to be traveling outside the U.S. this year? Well, these are the most important things you're going to need to know before you go. My name's Christian. I'm 25 years old, and I've been to 75 countries around the world. And everything in this list, I wish I knew before I started traveling. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a seasoned traveler or a new traveler. You are most likely going to learn something from this list. But if there's something that I miss in this video, let me know in the comments below so that I can learn it and everyone else can too. Number one, when people ask you where you are from, you are not from America. You are from the United States. This is the easiest way to make someone from South America or Central America very angry. Technically speaking, every country within North America and South America is from America. That is why other countries in the Americas get angry at U.S. citizens for saying they're from America. Because it gives off this perception that we feel like we are the only country in America, which is not true. I made this mistake many years ago when I went on my first date with a Brazilian girl and I said I was from America and she got very upset. And over the years, I've learned to not do this. And now whenever someone asks where I'm from, I am from the United States. Number two. It is cheaper and quicker for you to renew your passport outside the United States than inside the United States. This might come to a massive surprise to you, and it really doesn't make that much sense. And it didn't make sense to me until I had to renew my passport. I was traveling around in the Balkans, and I ended up in Romania. And while I was in Romania, I realized that I ran out of passport pages. You can see here, this is the last page of my passport. And if we go every page in between, is completely filled. And most countries have a rule that you must need two empty pages to enter their country. So you might be wondering, well, how did you get a new one? It's pretty simple. You basically just go onto the website of the US Embassy in whatever country, I went on the Romanian one, and I made an appointment. They had a next day appointment, and this new passport took seven days. It was about $40 cheaper than a normal passport in the US, and this passport is double the size, which in the US we charge an additional, I think, 60 to $80 for. You can see my old passport is 27 pages and my new passport is 50 pages. And my old passport took about two months in the US to come in, while the one in Romania took only seven days. Number three and number four I'm gonna put together. You don't need to rent a car outside the United States. Now I say this for the most common travelers going to the big cities for a few days. You don't need a car at all. If you're in Europe, if you're in Asia, if you're in South America, all of these places have really, really great public transportation, especially between touristic zones. This is literally something that in the US we don't have. We have Greyhound buses and we have Amtrak, but these things are actually quite expensive for being public transportation and they don't work very well. And I'm saying this for maybe the first time travelers who are heading to somewhere in Europe or somewhere in South America and they instantly think I have to get out of the airport and rent a car. You do not need to do this. I have never been in a country yet out of 75 that I needed to rent a car. There's always a shuttle or a metro or a train that will take you from the airport to wherever you need to go. Now, if you would like to rent a car, because I have in a few countries, I've rented a car in Chile, in Bosnia, in Romania, a bunch in Southeast Asia, your US driver's license will work. Look, if you Google online, if you need an international driver's license, online on the internet will tell you yes, but I'm speaking from experience. In none of the countries, that I've rented a motorcycle, a car, have I ever needed an international driver's license? All I have is my New York driver's license, which is still valid. It's all that I've needed. You need this and you need a passport. Now, is there the chance that you could get a fine if you are pulled over? Yes, but I'll give you an example. I was road tripping in Bosnia with one of my friends and I was caught speeding. Then I was pulled over by the police. The police came up to me they barely spoke English, and I gave them my driver's license and all the car information, and it was no problem. I got no ticket. They were actually super, super friendly to me. I didn't have to pay them any bribes or anything, which is a thing outside of the United States, and it was perfectly fine. Number five, which might definitely be a new one for you. If you are taking money with you outside the United States, USD, make sure you bring the $100 bill with the blue stripe. This might sound very strange to you because in the US, $100 is $100. But the blue 100 is worth more than $100 in any other type of denomination of US currency. In the US, this is the same amount of money, 520s or 1 100. But here in South America and Southeast Asia as well, 
This will get you 10% more in the exchange rate than this. And it's not all $100 bills. It is the new ones with the blue stripe. It's very weird how economies work in some of these countries in South America and Southeast Asia. But I'm telling you, this will get you more money. And you might think, well, if I'm only spending a week, what does it matter? Well, it's still money. You're losing 10% of your money if you bring the old bills. It's super easy to get the new bills in the US and it's difficult down here or in Southeast Asia. So why not make more money if you can? And number six, I wanna throw a bonus one in here, English. Do not worry about English. Out of the 75 countries I've been to around the world, only one country has not spoken English, and that country is Japan. I've been all over the world, from Tanzania to Mexico, Chile, Argentina, Spain, France, countries in every single continent except Australia and Antarctica, and I'm telling you, almost everywhere speaks English. Why is this? Because the international language, the international tourism language is English. And also, in these tourist destinations, a lot of the signs are in English. In Japan, almost every rail metro station is in Japanese, and it's also in English. So even though the people don't speak English, it's still possible to navigate only knowing English. Now, I don't want to deter you from learning other languages. I'm in the process of learning Spanish here in Argentina, and it's absolutely beautiful. It opens up so many opportunities for me. But if you're someone who's casually traveling to a place where you know you're not gonna learn the language. Don't let your ability to only speak English stop you from going. But let me know, did you know some of these tips already? Did some of these tips surprise you? A big thank you to all the Patreon, Facebook, and Instagram subscribers for making this travel around the world possible. If there's a topic you want me to cover in a video sometime soon, let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna be pushing the YouTube videos really hard these next couple of weeks, and we'll go from there. But bye guys, I'll see you in another video sometime soon.